clutch. Even a good tune can go through a clutch when you have a turbo car. While a brand new clutch disc and pressure plate will hold a nice tune, a high mileage one will probably start to slip on you. A basic pressure plate and clutch disc upgrade is nice here if you would like to retain the OEM dual mass. FYI, the SOC 764 pressure plate works with the dual mass, while the 487 GT3 RS does not. For those wanting quicker shifts and better acceleration, the Euro RS lightweight flywheel is a great choice. Even better is as you get further down this path, you'll be able to reuse all the parts for our dual upgrade and double the clutch holding power while having factory drivability. The OEM clutch can hold about 600 foot-pounds. A SOC 764 upgrade is rated around 900 newton meters or 675 foot-pounds. The 487 bumps that up another 10% to about 750 foot-pounds, all well above the capability of the stock internals. Connecting rods. Now that you have all the mods above, you're getting into the zone where you'll need to be worried about your connecting rods. These share the same rods as the 993, 993 Turbo, and 996 Turbo. They're super lightweight and reliable at factory power levels, but once you start pushing over 600 plus foot-pounds of torque, the rods will just say no. So let's throw a nice set of proto rods in so you don't need to worry about them anymore. Head studs. Right about the same 600 plus foot-pounds of torque, the head studs become an issue. You'd think that blowing a head gasket out would be a head gasket issue, but that's just the symptom, not the true problem. The OEM head studs are 10 millimeter all-thread rods with 170,000 KSI tensile. They're really nice pieces for a stock engine, but for big upgrades, they become an issue pretty quickly. Replacing the head studs with aftermarket 10 millimeter drop-in, you can get pretty far since the aftermarket studs have 190,000 KSI to 210,000 KSI tensile strength and a larger cross-section between the threads. But don't be fooled into believing the 1,000 horsepower on these studs or you'll just be paying to pull your engine down again. Yes, you can hit a 1,000 horsepower with boost ramps and creative tuning or get there quickly just by cranking it up, but your head gaskets won't last long and you'll be revisiting this well before you'd like to. So while you're there, go the extra mile and throw in a set of our 12mm Inconel 625 head studs and be done with it. Yes, you'll need to machine the case for the larger thread, clearance to liner carriers and cylinder head holes, but you'll be doing it once and not coming back. Our 716 head stud kit eliminates the need for liner carrier and head clearancing, plus OEM base and head gaskets fit over them. So it's a nice way to go as well. But the 716 head stud kit has a 70 to 75 foot-pounds torque limit versus the 12 millimeter in canal or torque to 80 to 85 foot-pounds and some shops push them to 100. Be careful up there as the heads can either warp or crack if everything isn't just so at the 100 foot-pound range. Fuel. Wow, it took a while to get here. On a 996 turbo you're doing injectors and pumps around 560 to 600 horsepower. A 997 turbo comes with 60 pound injectors and nearly a thousand horsepower worth of pump when running pump fuel, not E85. The 60 pound injectors are good for low 700s, while on E85, you'll barely hit 500. At this level, we'd like some Bosch 1100cc injectors for their precise fit, linearity of flow for nice tuning, compatibility with fuels, and the connectors don't require goofy adapters that are prone to failure. A set of 1100s are good for over a thousand horsepower on pump fuels, and low 700s on E85. When I say pump fuels, I mean gasoline-based fuels with a stoichiometry point of 14.7 versus E85 being down in the 9.7 range. I'm not saying pump fuel to run to the gas station and inspect 1,000 horsepower out of 91 octane. Pump fuel can refer to MS-109, Sunoco GT-104+, C12, C16, and many more. Any of these are basic gasoline fuels with a variety of additive packages for different applications. Beyond the 1100s, we like the Bosch 1650cc for flex fuel setups in the high 1200 wheel horsepower range on E85 and Bosch 2150 or 2200 for up and over 1500 wheel horsepower range. Of course, this takes more fuel pump and chassis lines to move that much volume. Our triple end tank pump setup with upgraded chassis lines works amazing here. Airflow and volumetric efficiency. While we may have been able to reach 1,000 wheel horsepower with a basic strengthening build, let's do it better. Improving the airflow path can lead to a higher volumetric efficiency, which will let us build an engine that's not working so hard to be here. Yes, turbos are the great equalizer and can push a ton of air through just about anything, but we love the adage of less boost, more power. 
A wipe pipe, throttle body, and plenum are great for basic upgrades, giving you improved throttle response and maybe 15 to 20 horsepower, where port work and upgraded cams can net another 50 to 75 horsepower. Add a GT3 intake manifold to this whole combination, and we're talking more 100 to 150 horsepower gains, all without raising the boost. So for the same 1,000 wheel horsepower level, we can actually reduce the boost, gain better power under the curve, improve response, and lower temps. This all leads to improved reliability at the same power level. Valve train. With more airflow, we're usually talking more RPMs as well. When upgrading your camshafts, you'll also want to install a set of high rate valve springs to keep everything under control. Higher lift and duration camshafts increase the acceleration and deceleration rate of the valves and lifters. To keep the valves from floating and whacking your pistons, these stiffer springs will keep the valves and lifters in contact with your camshaft and not your pistons. The 996 and 997.1 Turbo share the variable lift intake lifters, which are massive in size and weight when compared to the GT3 lifters that are designed to rev much higher. So even with stiff springs, 73 to 7400 RPMs is about all we like to rev these engines to with OEM lifters. An occasional 7600 seems to be okay, but too much of that and the lifters fall apart. We've pulled apart engines running 7600 to 7800 RPMs for a few years and couldn't believe the lifters were in pieces when removed, yet still running. Versus going full GT3, a neat fix is replacing the variable lift intake lifter with a flat tap it lifter that's nearly half the weight, then regrinding the intake cam for a single lobe versus multiple. This also requires some tricky tuning in the ECU to remove the variable lift, but with this combo, 8000 RPMs is possible. Displacement. Like airflow and VE, displacement can improve the power capacity so much you'll be able to reduce the boost again to maintain that 1,000 wheel horsepower level. By now, with all the mods we're talking about and 4.1 or 4.2 liters, we can reach this power level at a mere 1.3 to 1.4 bar. So rather than taking 2 to 2.2 bar on a basic build, 1.8 bar on a 3.8 basic build, or maybe 1.6 bar on a ported and cammed 3.8. We're all the way down to 1.3 to 1.4 bar for the same power level. And running these engines at stock boost levels when built this way can produce twice the original power level. Yes, I drive a thousand plus wheel horsepower 996 turbo and I'm building a similar engine for my 2010 997 turbo and thoroughly enjoy being able to drive it around the track at 0.8 bar while making 800 wheel horsepower at that boost. With the 996 and 997 turbo engines being so similar, our video, I blew up my Porsche, we found the weak links on the path to 1,000 wheel horsepower and beyond, covered many scenarios beyond this point, taking you all the way to 1850 wheel horsepower levels. Make sure to check that one out if you haven't seen it yet for some amazing engine builds. While there's so much more we could go into, we'll need to save that for a future video and get back to work and building amazing engines for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, be sure to share with your, all your car friends, who I'm sure will like, comment, and subscribe. Let's all have a great time building our dreams.